Hello everybody, my name is Jason and I am here on an Attack of the B-Team server that I started with a couple of my friends a few days ago and we are having a blast. I mean it is a lot of fun and it is a great mod pack but I was really bummed out that it didn't have applied energistics. I, I'm terrible at sorting chests. I come up with a great sorting system and then I'll get in a hurry and then I'll just put everything in one chest off to the side and then that chest becomes two or three chests and then suddenly I can't find anything because they're all in junk chests and I, it's it's terrible so the the part where, that I loved about applied energistics is I could dump everything in one spot and then I can just search through it search by name pull it out from any place on my base pretty much and then even do the auto crafting and I was really bummed out that that wasn't in attack of the B team except for it is and I am so glad I found it because in the Project Red transport pipes, all of that functionality is there. You have a console, you can search by name, you can put stuff in and out from multiple places on your base. It's not as fast as applied energistics, but you can even do auto crafting if you really want to get into it. And I am so glad I found it and I want to share it with everybody because I know a lot of people are having trouble with the fact that there's no great mass storage system in Attack of the B-Team. So I'm going to show you my setup and I'm going to show you how to build it and then hopefully no one will ever have trouble with their storage ever again in Attack of the B-Team. So here we go. Alright, this is it. This is the mass storage system. You can see it's just a bunch of double chests connected with these Project Red pipes and it works great. You right click here on this orange one and you can see everything in your system. You can pull things out and it all gets sucked out and then dragged right up into this chest here then you can do what you want, go craft and then you can place it all back and then it gets sucked right back down into it what it does is it just goes down this pipe and it goes to the first place the nearest chest that has room for it so you got all this stuff, it's in no particular order you can sort it by uh, making it so that only cobble comes into certain chests or only dirt comes into certain chests or you can blacklist items out of chests and that kind of thing and you can also set the priority so you can set it off you can send stuff off to some auto processing way off to the side if you'd like anything like that and it's really great and as you can see there's a pipe that goes up there it goes out to my house that's Princess Buttercup and T-Bone keep waiting for her to eat him but she doesn't and come to here we have a whole the exact same system up here a little smaller version it only has a single chest for the input but everything comes straight out right back in just like you are downstairs and it's really cool and I even have another thing set up over there by my smeltery so I'll show you how to make it. Here we go. Alright, for the technical portion of the video I've switched back to the default texture pack. Um, these are the items you're going to need. I'm not going to go into the recipes exactly because NEI comes with the mod pack so you can just look them up. Uh, you're going to need a little bit of red and green. You're going to need a lot of orange and magenta dye. You're going to need a whole lot of glowstone. Uh, you're going to need quite a bit of cyan and then the rest of the stuff you're probably gonna have on hand by the time you start making this anyway so uh, uh, anything that's not listed I think stone you need like four stone and that's it but here's what we're gonna build uh, we're gonna have an output chest, an input chest, and a couple storage chests um, basically a very small version of what I made in my base and yeah let's get started so here we go we're going to need some item transport pipes and a routed interface pipe and let's switch that on anytime you're connecting to a chest other than the request console thing uh, you're gonna need an interface pipe so we're gonna put those there and then we're gonna connect them with just the regular pipes and now you have a connected system Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything yet. If you add cobblestone, it just stays in that chest. 
All right, so the next thing you're going to need is that's the wrong chip. We need an export chip or an extractor chip and then a responder chip. Those two act as a pair. If you have one without the other, they don't really do anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to configure the extractor chip first. So this is going to configure coming to this and we have uh, we have the option to whitelist items or blacklist items. We want everything to be sent, so we don't want to whitelist nothing because then nothing will be sent. But if we blacklist nothing, every, everything will be sent. So that's all we need to do for that. What we do is we right click on the uh, interface pipe and we connect it like so. You can also hold it in your hand and just right click the pipe and it pops right in there. So now what happens is this thing is set to expel any items in this chest as long as there is a pair waiting for it somewhere over there. So for that we need the responder chips. And we do pretty much the same thing. We head it to uh, blacklist and then we have it blacklist nothing. And we're going to do something. We're going to set the priority to negative one here just for the time being. We'll show you how that works later. But then we're going to throw these in there, and suddenly you're going to see the cobble start going from that chest to the first available chest. That's exactly what we want. But let's say you don't want exactly that. Let's say you only want cobble to come to storage chest 3. So we're going to grab a cobble. We're going to come back here. We're going to grab this. And then we're going to come and we're going to whitelist cobble. That was the wrong one. Whitelist cobble. Set it to whitelist and cobble. So now only cobble will go into this chest. But since this chest is closer and it accepts cobble, all the cobble will still go there because this chest is further away. So what we have to do to fix that is change the preference back to 0 or 1, just something higher than the other ones. Stick it in there. Now suddenly you see particles doing a little bit different and then the cobble comes all the way to the back and that'll happen until this chest is completely full and then it'll go back to doing the first available chest that will accept it. So we're going to take some stuff out of there and then we're going to grab some more stuff. And we're going to toss them in here. Now you see all the other stuff it's going back into storage chest 1, and it'll continue to do that until it's full, and then it'll go to storage chest 2, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. And any cobble will still go back to storage chest 3. So now we basically have a sorting system. We could whitelist in things in all the different chests, and we would have a great storage system, and, but that's not what we want. We want a nice computer system. So we need to get the stuff back out of the chest. So we're going to need a routed request pipe. We're going to need item broadcaster chips. Just like the other two sets of chips were pairs, these two things are pairs too. So we're going to put the routed request pipe right next to the output chest. And when we click on it, it brings up the console. It's not connected to anything yet, so it's not going to pull up anything. But we need a junction pipe and some transport pipes. And we're going to put a junction pipe here. Now the reason you have the junction pipe is because when things get sent out of a chest, they know where they're supposed to go. And if they hit a junction pipe, they'll go to the correct place. But if they don't hit a junction pipe and they hit something like this, it'll randomly pick something and then it'll just bounce around in the system until it finally finds where it's supposed to go. You don't want that to happen because it takes forever for stuff to get sent. So you want to put a junction pipe in there and then everything will get transported correctly. Now it's connected to the system. But you still don't see anything. And that's because it needs broadcaster chips. So the broadcaster chips have a couple settings. We're not going to go over them just now. But basically, we're going to have it to uh, items blacklisted, nothing. And everything else is fine. And then we're going to just pop them in here. And now, everything in those chests now show up on the system. Now you do have stuff in here that isn't showing up on the system. You have 48 wheat in there that aren't showing up there. And here we can put in some more stuff. And the reason they're not showing up is because there's not a broadcast chip in there. 
So we can add another broadcast chip. Let's make sure the settings are all right. Blacklist nothing. And now everything shows up. You got a lot more cobble, a lot more wheat, and a lot more dirt. We can pull stuff out now. Everything just all comes flying in there. Let's show up in this chest. When we're done with them, we stick them back in. And they all get worked back into the system. Now if you'll notice, it's only sending eight items at a time, which is really slow. But you don't want that. So what you can do is you can grab some more extractor chips. You can grab another interface pipe. We're going to add an interface pipe right here. And then we got these extractor chips, and we're going to make sure they blacklist nothing. And we're going to add them to this one. And then and now we got all those we need one out there. But now you can see it's sending stuff out really quick. A lot bigger groups of stuff are leaving. It's wonderful. Okay, now there's one more chip here we have. It's called an overflow chip, an overflow responder chip. The problem is sometimes is if something gets sent and then by the time it gets there it realizes it can't be there. So what will happen is it will bounce back. And if there's no overflow responder chip anywhere in the system, it will just bounce around in the system forever. So what you want is you want at least a chest somewhere. We're going to use this main chest here. And then we're going to put an overflow responder chip. It doesn't have hardly any settings, just the preference in case you have more than one. But Stop it in there, and any time something gets backed up, it'll come back out here, and then I'll, stuff will stop being sent because there's no place for it to go. And that's when you know you need to add more chests. So now basically we have our system exactly like we want it. We want to pull out all this stuff, and then we can add it back. Well, we're done. Pretty cool. That's exactly what we need. Now, what if you want another console? So, if we come over here. We have another input and output chest. And we've got a few more tools. We basically have some routed junction pipes. We're going to need one of those here because we're connecting to a new set of item transfer pipes. We're going to need another junction there. We're going to need an interface pipe there and a routed request pipe there. Now you notice this thing connects to both of them but only the side with the yellow lines is the one it's actually connected to. Um, if we have a crescent wrench, I think there's one in here. Yeah. Our crescent hammer. If you shift right click it switches back and forth and it'll connect to a different chest. Now we basically uh, do we add the Okay, we still need to add this. The item extractor. So we're going to set it to blacklist nothing. Pop it in there. Now when we add stuff to this, it'll get sent back into the system. Great. And you can also add more extractor things there. You can add an uh, overflow chip there if you want. Uh, there's no, no reason to though because you have your main overflow already set. And now you can pull stuff out from here. And it all comes flying to you. And when you're done, you stick it back in. All right, and that is pretty much the system. It is great. It's not applied energistics, but it is close enough that um, you can enjoy having a mass storage system. So there you go. All right. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, if you if you saw something you liked or was useful for you, please let me know. If I get some feedback, maybe I'll do some more videos about the automation possibilities and, and maybe the um, the auto crafting type stuff because it's not as straightforward as applied energistics, but it'll do on a pinch. And so I hope you guys are having fun. Hope you're enjoying Attack of the B Team. Uh, I know I am. And I will catch you guys later. Bye.